We're in Canada and you like hockey, eh? Eh? going to hold the hockey puck down. See that? So then when we pull the drill press down, we can hit the hockey puck dead nut and center and make a big hole in the center um, for our massive bolts that are gonna go through our roof. So that's pretty rad. A lot of times when you're holding something very small, it is challenging on the drill press and the drill press just wants to like suck it back up um, the bit. So this should help us a lot. And we've got a lot to drill. As you've noticed, I think 42 of them. So here we go. There's Brian figuring out what dead nut center looks like. <laughs> uh, I think it's approximately right here. Considering the regulation size of the hockey puck is about three inches by an uh, inch and a half. Yep, that looks about center ice, Brian. Good inch job. An inch. <laughs> an inch. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can tell we're big hockey fans. <laughs> yeah, we don't know the measurements. We don't know the official measurements. Rude. Sorry. Sorry. It's kind of rude to be Canadian, not be really into hockey. Working I on. like playing it, watching it. Mm. Look at that. That's rad. <laughs> that router is coming in handy, eh? Yeah. So that, that where the T is right there, uh, this is a 3 8 inch bit, and we need the 3 8 inch, 3 8 inch bolt to go right through it. So it needs to be approximately right there all right hockey fans sorry we're gonna drill a lot of holes in these pucks we couldn't tell the guy that sold us the pucks that we were gonna do this because he looked like a really big hockey fan and he probably would have been just devastated what we're gonna do with these pucks <laughs> We got more metal primer, which is good. The self-etching kind, that variety. Um, so we can put this stuff on top. We got a little nervous there, didn't we? Just a little bit nervous. <sighs> we thought we weren't gonna find more of this stuff. This wasn't the original one we used. We no. originally used Tremclad primer. That one. For galvanized steel. Yeah. Um, 
The guy said that this should work, and he said if it doesn't work, we'll be the first to find out, and we should report back, so. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we will see, and uh, we will go get back to work. Um, we just have the inner belly of our uh, Unistruts to do, and then after we get the primer on, we'll put a nice coat of white on them, then we can take them up to the roof. Boop, boop, boop. What are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'll pull the bus out and uh, start marking the roof for where the holes need to go. Uh, we've measured out where about approximately where they need to be in the roof, and I think we're gonna use a 28 inch spacing on them, which should give us enough uh, holding strength as per Unistrut and uh, our mounting way that we're doing this. Look how I put on my pro, yo. Yeah, this is her, okay, so her I thumb missed. is right here, but the actual thumb, uh, there's no thumb in there. <laughs> Thought I better tell ya, I leveled up my pro. Mass Pro. Mark holes. Drill holes. Clean. Probably don't need to write holes every time. Nope. Rivet nut. Polyurethane. Are we putting polyurethane into the rivet hole? Are we doing it on the rivet hole? Just do it around the hole, like after the rivets are popped in there. Or I don't know! Do it on polyurethane caulking around the rivet nut holes, then set the rivet nut into it so it gushes out That's the sides. Like Boom. Uh, we need to add one more in here, oh, no. which is uh, spray paint the holes. We're gonna have to work on our list and get back to you, okay? What else needs to go? So this is bolt. Bolt. Mark the holes, drill the holes, clean the holes, paint the holes. Poly let the holes dry. Let the, <laughs> let the dry the holes, polyurethane cock the holes, riv nut the holes. Then we're gonna go kind of backwards here. So we'll polyurethane cock the puck on the bottom of the hockey puck, then assemble all this stuff. So I think be... we should assemble it all first because we have to right. push those hockey pucks onto the bolts or onto the, yeah, the bolt. And those are going to stick all together, all, all one after all the other. All of these? Yeah. And then after that, then... Is there also... poly in every layer? No. Only right there. Oh. But then we also have to. Oh, Loctite. Loctite! So, when does the Loctite go? Right before we go and. Do we juke it into the into, into the, the holes right before we put it in? We could do that. We could try to do the threads or we can try to juke it in the hole, but we have to wait and see what the hole looks like first after we okay. root net it to see how close the threads are up. And then. Normally, you put it on the threads of the bolts. Loct but you could put it on that also. Brian's list and my list. <laughs> They're the same but different. Yeah, mine's a little kind of all over the place because it was the first list. Right. <laughs> Hers is more organized. <laughs> I bring the Virgo to the list. Thanks. No problem. Okay, let's do this. All right, so right now I am just laying out a unistrut to kind of uh, position where the holes are gonna be. Um, I've got a, um, a chalk line. Thank you. Ready? Yeah. Nice. And I have to make sure that the hockey pucks are far enough away from the top rub rail but close enough that we can get the unistrut 
as close to center as possible to keep it from tipping too much. It's gonna tip a little bit, but I don't think that that's gonna be a major issue because we're gonna be putting all the bolts every, holy smoke, sound like an explosion. All right, well, we're gonna put a uh, bolt every 28 inches uh, right in between where the hat channel meets with the uh, rib nuts. So I don't know how it's gonna work. We'll see, we've never done this before. So there you go. So right here, if you could see in between this one and looking that way, see right back in there, right there. That rivet on the hat channel. So not every single piece of, or uh, hat channel rib has rivets all the way through it. Every other one does. They'll have uh, two rows of rivets. So the two rows of rivets, it's like, oh, well, there it is. There's where the, the flange on the hat channel is. But the ones that only have one, I was like, okay, well, what side is that on? So you can see the rivets right here. This is the hat channel that goes across the top. And then coming across over here on this particular one, you can see that there's rivets all the way along here and along there. So you just basically measure dead nut in the middle and you'll be able to see that up on the roof. But hold on a second. I got distracted. Oh, damn. Ooh. Oh, that's a nice looking counter. That is really distracting. If you haven't seen that video right up here, right up there. Another sweater we have. Now is not the time to be scared. No. Here, I'll move all this Step stuff. Step on? There you go, babe. Really? <laughs> You're normally better than that. Babe, I haven't done it for a while. And she did great. I'm so proud of her. My little climber. <laughs> Glad I had my safety glasses on. Yeah. So. Essentially, there's going to be a puck at every rib. Yeah. Or hat channel. I'm surprised you're not measuring. Tracing. I just traced. Can you believe it? I will measure. And make I might fall off the roof. I'm so shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Roughly 28 inches. Well, that was a good nap. Wasn't it, Ms. Bick? Sure was. Yeah. So uh, we let them dry the yeah. Unistrut overnight. Yeah. Because we need to flip them over and do some more painting on the bottom side. Yeah. And it's good painting practices mm -hmm. to try to let your paint dry for the period of time that they talk about on the can. Yeah. We're a little bit short of the time, but it's touchable See? after like 15 minutes. So yeah. it's been overnight. Yeah, it's We're super cool. dry now. It's super dry. We're gonna flip it and paint it. Um, and yeah, it doesn't look amazing. There's dribble drips all dribble over. Dribble drip. <laughs> painting with a spray can sucks. Goober gobber. At least we're not really educated in how to do it beautifully, but. Whatever. Did you notice I got a haircut? Touched up his mullet form. Yeah, formed it up a little bit. So you gonna enjoy that? Yeah, enjoy that dirty old mullet. Yeah. It is cute. I'll be a real hockey player before you know it. <laughs> Be sure to shake your can for about one minute. That way you've got a nice mixture of your paint. <laughs> Good luck with that. These spray cans. Dribble drip city. Dribble drip. Dribble drip. Dribble drip. Dribble gobble. Before we go on the roof for the coldest, windiest day, we're gonna need Canada Pro. <laughs> Whoa! Hey! Aww, hey. Oh, we met, Jay! Feeling oh, a little Canadian, eh? Got our hockey pucks, eh? <laughs> and we're also gonna need our Glove Pro, Ear Pro, and uh, I'll get my gloves here in a moment. Let's go! Nice 
six and a half gives us plenty of room uh, before the flange and gets us closer to the flange without risking it. Because like, if you push down on that, there's a lot less. Uh... See how it's not flexing right there yeah. versus right here. So much flex. It's got a little bit of flex. So much. So much, girl, girl. The big line. That one's perfect. And then, this okay, so where was your next one? Move a little bit. Okay, so this one, let's move it just a little bit. So we'll do a circle right here. And then a line, just so that we know that that's the one that we want. Here I come! I'm Here. coming! Here she comes to save the day. I'm gonna make all the little holes, starter holes, and then Brian's gonna go in with the big drill and make other holes. It's windy out today, kids. Try not to get blown off the side of the roof. All right, here we go. Through one layer or something. <laughs> there it is. There it is. All right, for the next hole, we're bumping up to the 17 32nd bit. For a 3 8 inch rib nut, which is this guy right here, it takes a 17 32nd bit to uh, fit the outside diameter of that rib nut right there. And I just put one on a bolt so that we could test our holes as we go. Uh, the reason why we did a smaller drill bit first is because that'll actually set the hole, it'll get us right on the center where we need to be, and then this one, it'll be easier to, to widen the hole versus starting with a bigger bit. So that's a little trick for you. Oh, and we want to give a huge shout out to Aaron at North Star Journey. Yeah, thanks so much for this awesome idea. If we hadn't been following you on Instagram, um, we would have never seen this idea. And we were so lucky because Aaron even jumped on a quick call with us, probably a half hour call, yeah. spent some time telling us how exactly he did this and his thought process behind it. And he even sent us some footage. Roll that footage. Hey guys, Aaron, North Star Journey. I'm gonna run through our materials that we ran so at least you have a good idea of how to achieve what we did. We used Unistrut channel. It's an inch and five eighths square by an inch and five eighths. It's got half inch holes perforated down the bottom. Keep in mind, this does come in 12 gauge and 14 gauge. The lower the gauge, the thicker it is. We decided to go with the thicker 12 gauge just because we knew there was gonna be some structural stuff mounted to this at some point with some auxiliary water tanks. As far as the hardware goes, we got a half inch bolt, four inches long, goes through the first washer, through the channel, through the second washer, through the spacer, through this is representing the roof skin, through the hat channel, to another washer, and an eye nut. We did notice that drilling this perfectly square um, to the hat channel was important and since where you're drilling is off on the kind of on the corner and the curve of the roof um, the drill bit has to be at a slight angle versus being straight up and down so this all sandwiches together correctly the sealant i've been using is a 3m 540 polyurethane adhesive sealant and i've used that liberally on pretty much everything we've done um, i think we've probably use two two whole tubes to do all of this project hopefully you guys have as good a luck as we have catch you later so if you aren't already go check out his uh instagram and his youtube channel he's a excellent metal worker and Impressive. uh really like his style so thanks brother well, we're just going to carefully remove that butyl tape so that we can get a nice flush on the uh, rib nut. Rib nut. There we go. Perfect. That punches through. Freaking.
fucking goes. Bunches. Oh, that's the edge of a furring strip right there. You hit it? Oh, the wood. Yeah, which is fine. That's fine, it'll still grip. Because it goes all the way in the hole, it'll <laughs> mushroom out just fine. Next up, we're gonna clean the hole so we can paint them. All right, I'm ready for hole number one. So while Aaron's up top spray painting, I'm holding the cardboard up against the holes so that uh, spray paint doesn't come down into the bus. But we need to spray paint uh, so that we don't have the bare metal, which will help reduce the chances of rusting. Can you look down through the hole? Is that the camera? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. started raining so we're gonna put this camera away and we may just end up filming with the GoPro if we can get it to not blow off the roof otherwise we're just gonna smash this project and do our best to film it as we go, there you go. oh thanks <sighs> I saved you <ya. laughs> So hold your end up. I'm gonna get the first one in. Okay. All right, that's in. Second one. All okay. right, that one's lined up. Third. Third. That's four. All okay. right, so just balance that for just a second. Yep. started raining y'all. <laughs> Just trying to get this rail on. Ah! We got holes on the roof. On this side. We're not ready to leak test. <laughs> it's gonna give us a false positive. Well, it feels like it hardened in those weirdo spots. Yeah. I wonder if it was just so cold that it didn't... Didn't it here? Yeah. Oh man, we got rained out. So we had to go take a nap. Yeah, and we were just getting into a good groove. So yeah. we're gonna pull the bus out again today. It is cloudy and windy and cold yeah. again. Um, but we're working on our home. We gonna wanna get it done. Yeah, it's like 24, hour, 24 kilometer per hour winds up to 36 kilometer per hour gusts. So hopefully we don't get blown off the roof. So something that you might be wondering is, why are we using Unistrut instead of just welding up some square tube to put up on top of the roof for our rooftop rack uh, for storage, or even to mount the solar panels? Something that we want is something that's modular so that if we wanna make changes in the future, it's easy to do. With the Unistrut, there's the channel and there's these things called channel nuts that go up inside the channel that you can screw or bolt other objects to. So it's pretty modular. Yeah, 
and they are super strong and durable. So um, just per square foot, they can take a major load of weight. Um, Brian <laughs> knows those numbers and has looked those up and we won't bore you with those kind of details, but it is really, really strong stuff. Um, plus, it gives us the opportunity, if in the future we want to expand on our solar, we're gonna start with four solar panels um, by the sounds of it, but someday we might decide to pump it up to six and do some kind of moving mechanism where you can move solar panels forward or who knows, but this gives us all kinds of possibilities for that. Yeah, so the flexibility of it, the ease of installation, um, I think it's gonna be a better choice just for us long-term uh, because we're kind of indecisive at times whenever it comes to installing stuff. So we might install something and then later change <laughs> it. Well, this gives us a great platform to be able to change things as we go. And I think that that's one of the beauties of doing this whole project is that as you do it, you start to realize like, for instance, our skylights, as we're up on the roof, we're like, oh, the original square skylights that we made in the emergency hatches, if we redid that now, they would be so much better. And that was literally just a year ago. So. It's already been a year? Yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. So it's nice to give yourself room to expand and grow. Your skills will obviously get better the more you're working with tools and the more ideas that you have. Things will just start getting a little more exciting and juicy and um, yeah. So this allows us to expand and grow um, as our skills level up and uh, our creative mind expands also. So before it starts raining again, we're gonna get outside, jump up on the roof, and uh, install some more rib nuts. Yeah, let's finish this job. Let's go. And it's only gonna get even more strong as we attach stuff to it. So we open up the rib nut tool, put a rib nut on there, spin it on till it bottoms out, and then um, then we put the polyurethane caulking on it. We weren't told to do this, but we decided that we were going to just for our own peace of mind. Um, making so many holes in the roof. This seemed like a nice way to handle. Sealing around that. the rib nut. Yeah. So now that we have the rib nut with a lot of polyurethane caulking on it, it's gonna basically seal the hole around that. Um, something that I found is that you gotta be completely perpendicular to it and push down and there we go. Then pull it up and then rotate this. This unscrews the threaded part of the riv nut insertion tool. There we go. And then I wipe the threads on this so that we could thread the next one without an issue. So we're leaving that around there because we're gonna put more on the back side of the hockey puck. And then we're also gonna put some thread lock on. Uh, the red thread lock, which is the heavy duty anti-vibration because we don't have a nylock nut on the back side of this and we don't want vibrations to cause the bolts to loosen while we're driving down the road. Make sense? Sounds like a good idea. All right. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> you know it's hard when Garcia starts grunting down on it. <laughs> I was like, can I try? He like looked at me like... <laughs> Next up, we're gonna apply polyurethane caulking on the bottom side of the hockey pucks. Aaron's doing a close ring right around uh, the 3 8 inch uh, bolt and then another ring a little further out so that we've got good uh, smush out and good sealing. And then I'm applying thread lock to the threads after she does that. 
is lined up. All right, set it down slow. Get that one started. noticed is in a few spots we've collected some little flecks of rust on the roof. We think that it is due to little metal shards from when we did the curved skylights. You can see that video right here. Um, just because when we did those skylights we couldn't get up on the roof to clean it properly. So what we're being a little more mindful of this time when uh, creating metal shards and then uh, leaving them on the roof is we're just gonna try to vacuum them up and clean them up a little better because the last thing you want is to create rust where there wasn't rust originally. Yeah, what happens is the little burrs, they, uh, if they don't get sheared off completely on the bottom, they'll catch, uh, but it needs to be a snug fit not loose and that's a perfect fit right there and then the flange needs to be flush against the the top cool. so if there's any uh metal shards right up here on top with a gloved hand you can normally pick them off or with a screwdriver or something like that So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use these things called channel nuts. These are spring channel nuts and what they do is they've got these little grippers here that grip on the inside of the, of the rail essentially and they're gonna line up with these spots here. So we're gonna kind of line them up. You stick it in with the spring, you turn it. I'm just trying to get them close so that whenever we do put the bolts in here in a second, uh, they they line up for us. The slinky just holds the channel nut in place while you start your bolt yeah. and after that it's pretty much useless. So those holes look like they're almost lined up. Let's slide this one over. That one slide over just a little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah. So that's pretty close. So now we're going to take our thread lock here and put it on a bolt. There we go. That one started. So you got about 15 to 20 minutes of work that you can do before this uh, thread lock starts setting up. And then after that, supposedly it's pretty hard for this red one. There's also blue uh, thread lock, which is uh, not quite as heavy a duty as this one. Um, but um, the manufacturer uh, is saying that this stuff uh, will prevent vibrations better than the blue um, for heavy duty applications. So we thought we would go go big on this one. There we go. So now that connects the top the top uh, of each of those uh, unistruts together and uh, prevents them from swaying independently. And that's how the manufacturer recommended put, putting two ends together. Um, we saw Aaron from North Star Journey attach his plate to the bottom. The benefit I see to that just right out of the gate is right here in this section, we can't attach anything now. So attaching it to the bottom might be a better option, but we've never done this before. So we're just trying, trying it as we go. Okay. 
They're perfect. And then the yeah. spring aroonies, I just make sure they're not sticking out the bottom. Yeah. It doesn't really matter if they are or not, but what I'm doing, what I've been doing is just cockeyeing them. Mm -hmm. Like this one here. Yeah. I just push them up like that just so that they don't stick out the bottom. That's cool. Moody clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, go for it. This thing is 60 bucks for this rivnut popper or whatever it's called. Um, and it's already breaking. We, all we need is to finish one, two, we have five more holes. Yeah. Five more holes. We'll link it in our Amazon shop, but this one's not really the best one, but it's the only one we've used, so. Yeah. We may also link our upgrade. Yeah. So you get the El Cheapo and then the El. And a <laughs> Okay. You got another rib net? Rib net. On other projects, we've gone chintzy with the poly. It's not that chintzy, but some things you can afford to cheap out on. <laughs> the roof sealage, probably not one. So we're just going all out with the polyurethane, really slathering it on there. We did find that the thin metal um, has a different squeeze tension Aruni than uh, doing the double than thick. doing the double thick where the seams overlap. Um, so we've had to adjust the this thing so that the squeeze is enough and it's tight enough when it compresses the roof nut. Darn too. Ah, that one's loose. Isn't that weird? It must have just loosened This thing kind of sucks. I think that's the problem. Luckily, you can uh, adjust this piece right here and you can put this back into the hole. So if, it's, if it is a little bit wiggly, um, you just adjust it a little bit and then put it back in the hole and hopefully, uh, hopefully you can tighten it up a little bit. So let's see if this one tightens up. They have historically. Yeah. All right, here we go, last ones. Oh, it is.